Hey everybody, this is my uh, tutorial video for Jars of Clay's uh, tribute to coffee song entitled Coffee Song from their Hot Beverages uh, song uh, package. I can't remember the word now that they used on the Stringtown album when they were doing this song live. Um, this is the uh, Seatbelt Tuba version, um, so it's very the acoustic guitars and it sounds really good I mean it sounds great um, keys Charlie sounds great on the keys the guitars together and the bass sound very good the guys sound good for a rough take it's not bad um, uh, let's start you out um, I listed an E minor seventh for the chord um, you could just play in straight E minor and be fine so the difference between that being this here's the straight E minor I mean if you wanted to you could you could let that low E ring, it wouldn't wouldn't hurt anything, but or you can kind of let your finger reach up, this finger it's barring. While it's barring, also sort of touch it, so it's touch the low E string, your sixth string. So it's like muted, and then you like so like that. So let's go into it. difficult sorry so basically that um, the seatbelt tuba version is out there on YouTube they did a sort of a quote-unquote jars of clay's greatest hits and it's out there here that way so you can uh, for my playing lax you can listen to the jars of clay actually do it and follow along with the chart and have a good time that way um, but there's your intro um, so the E minor is this if you're playing a straight E minor if you're doing a minor seventh it sounds like this so that's that's for a later part but yeah if you recognize that um, and the A minor seventh is this two fingers to bar because I don't trust the one to do the job. Um, so it's basically I'm barring everything on the fifth and I'm reaching up to the seventh on the fifth string or A string and pressing that down and everything else is left open. And uh, to get that um, just a pull off on your E string or first string on the seventh so seven to five so and you could do it this way too. You could um, just bar the uh, first four strings um, on the fifth fret and play your A on the fifth and have your. Whoops, nope, I'm sorry. Let me slide down to the fifth fret. I guess. And it would still be okay. Or you can bar everything, all six, and. I guess you get a little bit fuller sound. At least you get another string in there. Um, and you just got to make sure that pull off is in there to get that pull off that they do on the seatbelt tuba version. Um, there's a little other little bounce arounds there that happen. So uh, we have a bar G. At least that's what I'm doing. that basically your E E major shape that you might be familiar with either or you guys are some of you got other guys are doing it this way and you're getting the exact same sound it's just the fingers are arranged differently uh, whatever you're more most used to unfortunately I learned this habit and I want to kind of, I kind of wish I could undo it and I'm thinking about maybe training myself to undo it by doing it this way instead it does make some other chord changes easier but for this song whatever and then we have a, uh, so it's a D suspended to a D major to a D second. I just put D on the chart. I didn't 
nuance everything with the suspended to the major to the second. I didn't do that, but I'm explaining it to you in the video, if anyone cares. Um, since I know that I'm, since I know that I'm going from a suspended to a major to a second. Um, it's just that pull off. Kind of get some extra strums to make sure all the notes ring out well um, for that and then uh, one more time and it's kind of muted real quick quieted and then we go into the verse let's look at the verse chords um, verse one like I said you have your choice between a seventh Seventh, a minor seventh, or just a straight minor? Um, I do think the A minor seventh kind of matters more versus playing a straight A minor. Um, I think it gives it, it's sort of a jazzy sounding tune uh, in my in my limited music knowledge mind. Um, so I would go with an A minor seventh there. Um, in terms of what Matt's doing for the intro, before I move on to the verse, the intro, so. So there's if you're playing it down here, there's there's your chords down here. If you're not a bar chord fan or you prefer Matt's part over Steve's or whatever the thing is that would have, you would rather do that. If you want to play the E minor 7th, it's... Um, to go with... Yeah, that's your choice. If, if one of you played a 7th and the other played a straight minor, it probably wouldn't stick out too much. It'd probably be fine. You know, just whatever your sound preference is there. Go with that. Um, but there's how Matt would do it, I think. I think. Um, so just another an E minor to an A minor 7. Now I am emphasizing play a 7th, not a regular minor, so on that one. So and make sure not to play your uh, your low E string during that A minor 7th chord. You can reach up with uh, an available finger. In this case, I'm going to use my ring and just you just touch it. Mutes it so you so when you strum it's this. Um, so there you get that. So it also gets you ready to play your G chord, which I don't play an added ninth. I don't go. I could, you know, or you can just. Which when I say that when I say the major versus the added ninth version of a G chord, it's the difference is, is the note in the notes would be such as follows. Or it doesn't it's another thing where the it doesn't probably not gonna hurt your sound by playing something a little different. And there is some palm muting in your strumming hand that's going on. If you're very, if you're just starting out a guitar, it's going to be something you're going to have to practice to get it right. Um, unless you're blessed with talent, and you can just snag on right away, or you have experience under your belt, and that's something you've done in other songs, so it won't be too much of a struggle for you to learn. Um, so. If I'm trying to play at tempo, it's... Try to pay attention to your chord changes. E minor, mute, mute your low E. And my G, when I do my G, I've gotten into the lazy habit of just muting my fifth string. Um, I mean, if I want to, I could press it down on the second fret to get that, that um, so I get. But I've kind of gotten into that. And just, 
mostly if you're careful where you strum with the, 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 the D chord uh, pullback, the so your A string and your fifth and sixth string shouldn't be ringing. You don't have to mute them. Um, I mean, you kind of could. You could at least for that suspended chord, just mute them. Oops. But that's something where you might want to just learn to pay attention to what strings you're strumming. So it's not... See, that's what it sounds like when you don't pay attention. It's versus... So I guess I've played long enough to get into the habit so I don't screw that up. I just, I'm sorry for the extra details. That's for people who are beginners. That's the reason for you advanced middle people who are kind of grinding your teeth while I'm doing those parts of the lesson. I apologize. I'm just trying to make this video accessible for all levels. So I apologize. Um, okay, verse one. What are we doing? We're pretty much, verse one, we're pretty much playing the chords that we just did in the intro. So we're not having to learn anything new until we get to the first chorus. What looks to be the habit of this song is that the intro and verses seem to be in E, I think, I think they're in E minor, I think they're in minor key, and they jump up to major during the choruses, if anyone cares about those facts. Um, or if, I've, if I have it wrong, please correct me in the comments. Um, so call it obsession, let's play. I'm gonna, I don't know, I guess I'll do a, minor seventh while I'm playing. I don't know. We'll see. Call it obsession. Call it Stop there. I just went into the, the chorus to show you how it connects um, from the verse. Um, like that. So call it obsession. Um, there is one new chord we have. It's an F major chord that's in there. Um, when you play it, you can, you have, you could go and let all the strings ring. In the recording, it doesn't sound like they do that. They kind of quickly like that and so maybe the are all that's played maybe just play all the bass strings and don't worry about the um, strings there so just kind of gets a that that low quick quick played going into the chorus again sorry just again trying to show the connection um so like i said a lot of what you're doing in the first verse is a lot of what you've already played in the intro so if you've practiced the intro enough um you should be doing well be well on your way towards being able to sing and play at the same time with it um again like i said for some of us who have great talent that doesn't take much or those of us who have practiced a lot that doesn't take much most of the time when I play in my church band, I play guitar and I don't sing. So when I have to play and sing, I usually have to pull back on my playing a little bit. I can't be quite as fancy with my strumming or, or any of this stuff that I'm not very good at in the first place. I'm mostly a chord guy. Um, so I have to just kind of, you know, I, you could kind of hear how I stumbled through that verse. So, um, like I said, um, uh, so you either play a minor seventh want to or not or just straight major so now I did a which you could do instead of doing a bar chord you could do a Major seventh, F major seventh. You can kind of, you can get away with that, I think. Or you could just, like I said, do the thing. Um, 
it, it'll probably sound more correct when you hear the bass guitar play that low, even lower octave F. Should sound much more on it, like the seatbelt tuba version. Um, which has a great sound to it. Um, so that, so, um, but yeah, that's pretty much where, that's what we're doing. We, a lot of the tricks we learned for the intro we're applying to the verse. Now we're going into the chorus. Let's do that. stops that happen in the chords and the intro and even in the choruses where there's just a or a pretty much those D and A chords get short rings and then they're told shut up. Um, so what we're learning that's new here, the F sharp chord, the E chord, uh, I guess the A chord would be new, yeah, for this song. Um, so we have a, a, an E major. Now, whatever you finger it this way, or you finger it this way, in terms of a, a pro tip for guitar, what's your next chord going to be? Um, let that determine. Maybe maybe start out with this. Instead of using these, finger, your, for your pointer, middle, and ring, start with your middle, ring, and pinky. So that makes it easy to slide up to the next chord, which will be an F sharp. So you'll be like this. You can do that. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do this. For the chord changes, you could do an E to an F sharp that has those open B and E strings. So that's... to a D second and when I do that I rest my middle finger between the A and E strings to mute them so to an A second reaching up with my ring finger to mute just my E so I have the that sounds pretty good um, or you can do you do it like this I mean, you can kind of have different ways. You're going to have to, based on if it's you playing or what group you're playing with, all those kind of nuances you can do with the chords will matter based on what your group is doing or, you know, whatever you need to pay attention to with your group there. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, just listen to the record um, to kind of determine which way might be the best if you're playing along with the record. Um... But yeah, there's there's your chorus. Um, interlude, we're pretty much doing our intro chords again. Um, let me show you that. Um, so there's your interlude chords, which are, once again, your E minor, A minor 7th, G, D. Um, it's kind of like your, what your, uh, gosh, your, the, the, yeah. In the intro, picture it's worth a thousand words. Basically, these this set of chords, these last two lines here, are your what's happening in your intro. So you've done this before. Um, we've already gone over that, so I'll move on to verse two. Um, verse two is pretty much verse two is the only slight difference. I mean, if you want to just be anal and nitpick, which that's what I'm doing for the sake of learning, is in this third line where there was an F chord played, it's a D. I just keep repeating the E minor, A minor 7, G, D pattern once, twice, three times, four times throughout the entire second verse um, for that. Um, that's the only difference that happens there. 
Uh, we have another chorus, a second chorus, which is going to lead into what I decided to label a bridge. I don't know if that's what they would call it, or an interlude, or whatever the technical musical term that I don't currently possess the knowledge to understand and correctly label is. <laughs> um, there's our second chorus. What's anything different about our second chorus? Um, compared to our first one, no, there is not. It is the same progression of chords. I pretty much copied and pasted it and labeled it second chorus instead of first, which made chart making a lot easier. Um, the bridge. Now the bridge has a new chord, a C seventh, that we haven't done. We have ooh, hot, 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 hot. And there are six hots. I counted them. <laughs> I took the time to count them. I took the time to figure out when they start. You have you have six counts with ooh, and then you have six counts with hot, hot, hot. Pretty much the hots land on the beats. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, hot, 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 hot. Um, and then ooh. And somewhere people need to breathe in between these because they're going to run out of breath. <laughs> Yeah. So take the time to breathe, maybe put a note to self, suck in some air here before you go to the next line. Um, C7. All right, so C7. This is, this is um, there's definitely some, di I think, some dichotomy going on between what Matt and Steve are doing. So we have the minor, the E minor. And this is where it's kind of, I don't know, it's probably a minor seventh because you can't do a... So it's like a switch between a minor, E minor, and then it's the seventh while you're doing a note. To a C seventh. singing one more time and then we'll move I promise we'll move on um. no, I screwed up let me try again I can't do the guitar and sing at the same time I'm sorry Just showing you how it leads into the verse okay so yeah those bar chords are hard for me i'm not no i don't have strong hands i should probably get some kind of exercise thing and work out my hands so i can have strong hands so playing that bar chord is not so painful um or get a better guitar <laughs> a guitar with a better neck that doesn't kill me the way this one does um not that this one's the worst one but anyway before i ramble too much um the bridge so we had an e minor seven I called it an E minor 7. That's what, you know, because we're doing that. During the bar. So I would just maybe just play a 7th. Unless you want to keep going. Unless, you, unless that bothers you and you care about it, do it. Um, like I'm just trying to deal with the people who are the most anal. You know, I can I can be that way too. Um, I can roll with y'all. Um, all right, C7. So it's a the notes individually played are. Without screwing them up. And if you play a straight major C chord, you. 
if you, if you play a straight major, it wouldn't sound as correct. And bar chord wise, it would down here. Close, but I prefer the C7, that's a. I mean, you could kind of do a hammer on pull off thing. Anyway, before I go into that, let's talk about what Matt, what I believe Matt is doing. Matt is playing probably either a or the minor seventh. All right, I need a pick that's a little bit harder than this one. This one's a little bit too flimsy. Okay. Um. All right. Better. So. So we have, now there's something special you can do with Matt's part uh, while you're playing it down here. So let me show you that. So you could kind of do that. You could even get that low E note. Okay. sloppy playing is a little bit allowed in this song. I think it's okay. I don't I think it wouldn't kill the song to play slightly sloppy to let a few bad notes ring through or in, incorrect ones. Um, but anyway, what's Matt doing there? And what's that little note, that bass climb up thing that happens? Well, let's look at that, shall we? The bridge. I would you do sort of do like a hammer on pull off with that seventh note in the E minor. Um, in Matt's part there, just on that B string on the third fret, just on and off while that's happening. Then you could move to your C seventh, which you could potentially let your low E string ring on your sixth string. When I'm talking, let me, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this. So I just did it. I'll do it one more time. What's going on here is so you're doing so you're doing that to go with it. Um, C7. Which see if you know you hit. And I'm going to hit the low E string, and you can hear how it doesn't. It's not dissonant. It's not. It doesn't sound bad. You could do that. Just pay attention to what your bass player is doing. If your bass player is sitting on the C note, then don't play that. Don't play the. Don't play that because that's not what they're playing. Um, probably better. Might be the better choice to sit on the C note to be more correct to the recording if you care. So, um, so in order to do that, to play if you still want to strum and kind of what you might consider sloppy strumming, but you want to keep your chord clean, is what you do. Press down all your strings, so you have... Now if you can kind of see where my hand is and you hear the individual notes I played, then you're playing the chord right. I'm not going to go over each finger and each fret because that's painful for both you and me. Um, but what I am going to recommend is that while you're playing this C note on the third fret, reach up enough while doing pressing down to touch your low E to mute it, so your chord your chord's root bass note is correct, so you have... Now let, let your keyboardist do that little part, like Charlie does on the record, because it sounds great on the keyboard. Unless you have a third guitarist, or you just want to play that lick, go ahead and play it. Your choice. Um, the chords, now the chord names I recommended were to the best of my knowledge. 
I put minor seventh, but you could play a straight minor. So we have E minor, so our bass note will be E. Then it'll move up to an F sharp, then a G, then an A, then a B, and then it'll jump into the next C7 chord, which is on the next page here. Um, so it's this. There you go. You have so strummed slowly. I do it like this. First, start with the E minor, or like, or if you want the seventh note in there. So what you do, E minor, then I reach up with this finger, I am going to painfully go over all the frets and fingers on this one, is I reach up and I grab my E string on the second fret, while I'm pressing down I am touching the A string enough to mute it, so it's, so it's, and then I just move up with my ring finger to the next fret. Then I, I, I let up on it for the A note, but I'm still touching the low E string, so, so it's still it's muted. So playing that note and then muting it to make room for the next, next change. And then I'm lifting up all my fingers and doing the C7. And I am touching the E string enough to keep it muted while I press down the A string, the fifth string, on the third fret. probably is um, maybe let's see there's sort of an a seventh that's played let me see here that happen well let me show you in fact I'm gonna to have to do a little correction on my chart so, so your copy will be better than mine uh, let's see we could just play an a7 there you don't have to do all that bouncing around like I do but it's sort of, it's either Charlie's doing that on the keyboard or everybody at the same time on both the guitars and the keyboard are doing that. So you could just... You could do that. You can get away with that. Or you can 
So you have kind of starting here, if you want to do that, if you want to do this. It's just bouncing around on the E string, starting out on the second fret. I do it with my ring and my pinky while my pointer and middle finger are holding down strings. I make sure I don't play my low E. I don't, all my fingers are being used to handle what's going on in that little part, so I have to make sure I, I just have to take the time to make sure I don't hit my low E while I'm playing it. You know, if you want to do your op more open chords, there's that, like we went over earlier in the video. But yeah, there is your song. Uh, you can end the song on an E chord, or you can end it on an E seventh, I guess. Kind of, you know, whichever your preference is, go ahead and do that. Uh, I don't know. It's like the guys, I think the guys are playing an E major on the guitars, and, and, and Charlie's doing the, the whole the walk-up thing on the keyboard, which sounds fantastic. Um... So yeah, but here it is, there it is, guys. This video is long. I'll do a performance video that might be preferred over this one since it's so darn long. But I was trying to explain everything. This is especially a good video for people who are just beginning to play guitar at all. They like jars of clay. They heard about the coffee song. They're in love with the song. They'd love to have a chart and a video lesson that went with it. Here you go. I just made it. Thanks for paying attention. Thanks for sticking with me. I'll get a performance video out there that's not nearly as long as this one that might be easier for intermediate players to follow, along with chords that will appear in the middle of the screen right here in tab map format. Thanks again. Uh, if you can, donate to my Patreon. One, $1 a month would be helpful. Um, I like doing these videos. If you like getting them, please just give me a dollar a month. Just a dollar. You know, off my 125 subscribers gave me a dollar. I'd have $125 towards motivating me to continue to do these videos, um, I make these charts, you know, I put the links up for free, um, you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay, I have a job, <laughs> I do make money, it would be nice to make a little more, and it would be nice if it came from the effort that I'd put into these, um, thanks a lot, keep watching, keep learning, rock on jarheads, thanks.